they would add a big next turn. Oh yeah, yeah. If we didn't have the uh, the Mara Slicer off of that draw from last turn, plus this four man invulnerable, but they they're gonna drop them. That's just how Demon Hunter works, man. The uh, Shuma would have been. We rip Blade Dance first, just in case we high roll the four five, the five four, and the one three, and then we play. They blade. Oh, okay. Well, they don't. They. I mean, they could just. Yeah. They're doing the order right, so. Not the worst. Now they're gonna throw the bladed lady in with rush, even though it seems kind of weird to not want to keep your minion full health. Dead next turn is if they play the penflingers first, I believe. Yep. All right. Yep. Penflinger, penflinger, this hero power. They might prep you this. Others gonna go straight face. Yeah, they don't need to. A <laughs> lot, of, lot of options to get lethal <laughs> here. <laughs> Are they gonna do a BM? Yeah, these guys, man. <laughs> oh, I don't think they BM. If they can fling at the right face if they want. Relentless than a uh, blade dance, because then they can just clear all three. Oh yeah, no, they could. No, they could. Oh yeah, they, they do. All right. I can hearth them. Huh? Uh, but okay, so I sorry, I didn't see the soul shear in hand, so we're just gonna rip the soul shear, go ahead and get the it's not the greatest value, we're only clearing a couple minions, but we also do put that 3 2 on the board. And next turn, we have the last head, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. The Shuma dropped, it was epic. Feels <laughs> bad for Randolph, I guarantee they had a like a bloodlust in hand, they would have had a big next turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, if we didn't have the uh. The Mara Slicer off of that draw from last turn, plus this four mana invulnerable. But they're, they're gonna drop them. That's just how Demon Hunter works, man. The uh, Shuma would have been. We rip Blade Dance first, just in case we high roll the four five, the five four, and the one three. And then we play. I think they played. Oh, okay. Well, they don't. They. I mean, they could just. Yeah. They're doing the order right, so. Not the worst. Now they're gonna throw the Bladed Lady in with Rush, even though it seems kind of weird to not want to keep your minion full health. Dead next turn is if they play the Penflingers first, I believe. Yep. Alright, yep. Penflinger, Penflinger, this hero power. They might prep you this. Oh, they're just gonna go straight face. Yeah, they don't need to. <laughs> That's a lot of, lot of options to get lethal here. <laughs> Are they gonna do a BM? Yeah, these guys, man. <laughs> uh, I don't think they BM. If they're gonna fling at their own face if they want. Relentless than a uh, blade dance, because then they can just clear all three. Oh, yeah, no, they could. No, they could. Oh, yeah, they, they do. Alright. I can hearth them. Uh, uh, but. Okay, so I sorry, I didn't see the soul shear in hand, so we're just gonna rip the soul shear, go ahead and get the it's not the greatest value, we're only clearing a couple minions, but we also do put that three two on the board and next turn we have the last head. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. The Shuma dropped. It was epic. <laughs> Feels bad for Randolph. I guarantee they had a like a bloodlust in hand. They would have had a big next turn. Oh yeah, yeah. If we didn't have the uh the Mara Slicer off of that draw from last turn, plus this four mana invulnerable. But they're, they're gonna drop them. That's just how Demon Hunter works, man. The uh, Shuma would have been. We rip Blade Dance first, just in case we high roll the four five, the five four, and the one three. Uh, uh, we're here and today then with we uh, the play... Hearthstone. It's gonna be the U Pike Bears versus the Shawnee State Bears, you know? What, what, a bear's gonna win tonight no matter what. Currently, we're just waiting on the deck list, and then we're going to hop right into the action. So if you could just please stay tuned.
Hi, well, well, welcome to the stream. So we're out of the game between the Pike Bears and the Shawnee State Bears. Uh, I'm Lag. I'm Doc. We'll be your casters today. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how Shawnee plays, especially coming off, you know, last season. They were, you know, NAC champions. I've yet to see my caster ring, but that's another story. <laughs> we're going to see I... if they, you know, <laughs> we're going to see if, you know, Shawnee keeps like their uh, their hot streak going. Definitely. Last was it last season? They, they definitely like the aggro decks. And I have a feeling, you know, they're going to, you know, keep steamrolling and keep bringing the aggro decks. Uh, I believe. Three of the four decks they're actually bringing tonight are aggro decks, aside from Garot Rogue, which is kind of more of a combo deck, I'd consider it. But the other three definitely seem to be a little bit more tempo-oriented. Definitely a fan of the, the aggro decks. I'd say that's the way the meta of Hearthstone's kind of swung right now, though. You don't get a lot of control. Kind of combos broken up now. Even with Elusia going out of combo-breaking status, it's still just the decks are so fast and synergistic nowadays. Yeah, definitely. No one wants a match longer than five minutes. <laughs> no one wants a match longer than five turns. That's true. Uh, looks like they're banning right now, I believe. They're, they're getting ready to ban. If uh, I was on their... If I was them, I think I'd have to lean towards banning Aggro Druid. It's just... I believe right now it's the only Tier 1 deck in the meta. It's just incredibly yeah. powerful, especially if it gets off to a good early game roll. I was about to say, it looks like uh, U Pike brought Demon Hunter, and I think I'm pretty sure that the only thing that Demon Hunter counters in Chani's deck list is Rogue. So I don't think they have anything to worry about the Demon Hunter. Yeah, I, ha I have to tend to agree with you there. Rogue, an incredibly powerful deck, but I don't know if you can justify banning one class just because it counters it. I think you're going to run your Rogue to get a win against something else. It's a pretty consistent deck. All right, looks like we're getting into game one. Looks like Shawnee has Shaman. You uh, Pike brought Hunter. Should be a pretty quick match here. I believe we're seeing a Elemental Shaman out of Shawnee and a no, an Elemental Shaman out of yeah Shawnee and then Hunter. Is actually not in the list we have for You Pike, so I'll be interested to see what they brought here. I have to assume That's... it's going to be some sort of face aggro hunter. It's kind of the only thing I've seen in the meta, but maybe we'll see something a little surprising here. I'm confused. Usually they have to, you know, post the deck list if they're going to use it. Uh, we might have uh, just got an outdated copy. You never know. That's no, true, that's no true. love for the spectators nowadays. No love for the casters. We do our best. Yeah. Mulliganing away at a full hand. Not liking what they see. Interesting. Yeah, usually, you know, you want with an aggro deck, you want to have those turn one, turn two plays. At least get something on the board. Try, try to put, you know. And it doesn't get much better than that to lead off, right? Wailing Vapor just sets you up. You can deal so much damage if you really get it going early. Yeah. I've played a couple matches of this on ladder, and I have to say, with looking at the hand Shawnee's got, I have to lean towards them. If they can get Granite down on four, it's just such a big cost reduction. It can be so hard to counter. Definitely. Oh, Interesting to see Boner come down on two. Here. Yeah, I would have towed him and maybe brought him out a little bit later, maybe to combo with. But, but if they're playing to double that Granite's battle cry even once, that could be a massive, massive win. They are the champions here. I am just the caster. Yeah, I'm sure they know better than we do. Yeah. High tempo plays from U Pike though. Developed quite a board for two two turns. Yeah. Oh, and the taunt to put Boner behind this actually might turn out to be absolutely massive. No. Are they going to go face, trade with the 1-1? One, one? Or, or just get rid of that 2-1? I feel like with Hunter, maybe like the less cards on the board, the better. But but the same argument you made, Dev, when you have that big of a taunt on the board, like a 6 health, no, they're going to take the Boner trade. That's true. I think it's a good, I think it's a good play. It's true. If I had the list for this hunter, I didn't know if it like if it buffs like all the beasts or not. So, and it doesn't matter. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Aim shot might be one of the most underrated cards I've seen in the meta right now. Essentially, operates as a three mana deal five, I believe. 
just yeah, very synergistic. Power. Renling is on four as well. No board for Hunter at turn four is can be tough to overcome, especially against another deck that can tempo j almost just as well as you. It'll be interesting to see what Upike's strategy is here, what that secret might be. I mean, yeah, but since I got a, got rid of the like the hammer beak, like they, they definitely like slowed Shawnee down. The freezing trap will do so as well. Yeah. So especially when you have no board, trying to slow the game down is probably the best best chance they have. But Forgeborn coming down, allowing all the elemental discounts, getting the weapon tutor out as well—that's still a very very strong turn for Shawnee. Looks like you, Pike, might just be looking for an answer here with that Kodo Bane. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what they're gonna find here. Maybe that next Seeker can help them slow them down a little bit. Um, do you think that is a freezing trap? Uh, I don't think you'd be too surprised to see a explosive here to try to AOE the board a little bit and make things soft, clear up, take a little bit better trades. I'm, there's a lot of options. I'm intrigued to see what it is. Definitely waiting to see what Shawnee does. They do have the Gray Worm in hand. The active Gray Worm as well. Yes, sir. So they're trying to get rid of that three five. It was oh, explosive. It was they read it and got rid of the two two in time. That's that's very well played from Shawnee. Great awareness. I was like gonna take the damage phase. Unfortunate they had to test freezing with that one one and lost the buff of the weapon, but you know it's a, it, it was a worthwhile risk. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. But definitely looking ahead, Shawnee definitely has the upper hand, especially with six burst in hand and a decent board to work with as well. Yeah. Another aimed shot. Aim Is that shot. hero power up to six now? Yeah, but that oh, will my. be their last. Aim shot though. Is this just the new face hunter? I believe it's just the new face hunter. Yeah, this is the new face hunter list. Oh, and the other granite's gonna come into hand. Their elementals are going to be extremely cheap if that gets down. Ooh, it is indeed. The granite. Gyreworm face one. as well. Well, that's one way to be the face hunter if you just go all face. He outfaced the face hunter. Yeah, outfaced the face hunter. That's the way to do it. Do they commit the canal slogger here for a heavy board and bait them out of removal? Or do they save it for pocket healing? I'm, I'm interested to see what their play is here. Uh, I'll definitely save it. I, I feel like it's a better choice to save it because you never know what the hunter is going to put down. You can always just rush into it. You have to get that help that you need. and It's there when you need it. It's, it's going to be two no matter what anyway, I believe. I tend to agree with you, but I'm also not a national champion, so I'm not going to second guess true. it whichever way they go. That's true. It looks like they're going to choose to commit it here and really make you Pike have it. Also, not a play I'm against. Yeah, definitely threatens. Definitely a little bit of threatening, you know, send that face. That does give them an onboard lethal with lightning bolt in hand should they need it. Yeah. They definitely have, what is it? I believe U Pike only has one quick shot left, and they already used all their aim shots. So Tracking? Maybe looking to find an answer here. Maybe looking for that second quick shot, maybe. Piercing shot. Piercing shot. That's, a, that's a way to deal with it. That's a way to get rid of it. That does actually put Shawnee out of onboard lethal range. By two, I believe. Colec yeah, was not the role they were looking for there. That's actually pretty unfortunate. Oh, Shereem will deal with it, though. Okay. Now, can Shawnee find two damage off the top of their deck? That's the question. The Neophyte draw. I think they might play Neophyte and then Hero Power. Or maybe they just might Hero Power in turn. I would be tempted to play the Neophyte here. I mean, you got to... What what better chance are you going to get to play it than trying to hold the 5-5 five, five on the board and really cause some disruption to him? Yeah, that is true. And maybe you might get a, a taunt off the totem. Hmm. 
that would be very interesting to see if they just pass it. I, mean, I suppose that is possible. I mean, it's still the five five still represents an onboard lethal. Yeah, but I think the only way that, that they are just going to pass. That, unless they have another piercing shot or a rush minion there. I mean, that could find Rhino, but it's going to be always oh, they've got coin oh. for Rhino. Oh. Alright. Yeah. It's interesting because playing Neophyte actually would have prevented that play, make because it would have made the coin ineffective. That's a left with double Neophyte. That's that is an unfortunate uh, set of draws. I think they're definitely gonna have the lightning bolt, the the Rhino, and then just probably play one of the Neo uh, Neophytes, and then like I said, Hero Power in turn, like that, like just just put some stuff on board until they can draw something better. Double Neophyte here is actually interesting because the Hunter can't very well clear it with his face because it would put him in Lightning Bolt range. Of course, he doesn't know that, but he kind of has to assume if they've been holding it all game. It's some kind of burst. So then clearing with the Rhino would send damage face and a fair chunk of it, five to be fair, but it would also sacrifice their board pretty hard. It would be an interesting conundrum as you fight if Shawnee were to drop these Neophytes. Because you have to remember, U Pike's hero power is still sitting on deal six. What kind of sucks for Shawnee here is they only have one lightning bolt in this deck. And it looks like they're going to use it on the Rhino. I respect that. You got a seven damage is a lot to leave up, especially against a deck like a face hunter. Both Neo lights come out. Going to offer double Neophyte. And, and, and the power. total. Okay. And it's Not a one one. That could come in to be effective. It's not a bad Any joke. little bit of damage here. Oh, you play's gonna find another rhino though. That's devastating. Ooh. Oh, okay. Choosing not to go face, it looks like. That's very interesting. Oh, I, wait, you have to you have to clear the board. It's on board lethal against him. That's true, but I figured with you know at least one of the, the Wranglers that they'd go face. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. tutor? There could be something here. Three damage? Hmm. Do you send that face in hopes to put him on one and force them to trade? No, because that's you're still eating lethal. This is a tough spot for Shawnee here. It's been a series of unfortunate draws. You're going to see what they get here off the Serpent Shrine. Well, I think they're going to get rid of that Rhino. They really need to get rid of the Rhino. Uh, looks, unfortunately, they can't. No elemental last turn for the Stormer. Well, they do get the Taunt. Rhino just sends free damage through it, though. It's such a powerful card, especially when it comes buffed off the War Songs. And it looks like they're going to finish with the Hero Power. That's well played to you, Pike. I, I have to give them credit. They played themselves out of a tough spot, played patiently, and managed to find a victory there. Yeah. You have to think, however, what would have happened if Shawnee would have had just a hinged little more bit of removal and could have sent that lightning bolt face, the Serpent Shrine would have ended it. That's a very, very close game for Shawnee. Definitely. I feel like maybe if they added another lightning bolt, maybe to like the deck list that, you know, if they would have drew that, they could have did something, but definitely very close. Definitely, definitely very close. It's a, uh, I'm interested to see how these next set of games go. Cause that element of Shaman obviously is a very, very powerful deck. They still got in their arsenal. I'm sure it'll find a win for the end of this conquest. They might even just go right back to it. I am yeah. very intrigued to see the rest of this play out. Yeah. So what is it? With, with this deck format, I believe you have to win with uh, each one of your decks. So we'll, we'll most likely see that Hunter deck again. Knowledge is power. You pike bring a mage here. It's like Shawnee breaks out the Hunter. What deck? Looks like this is going to be a quest mage for you, Pike, versus a aggro hunter for Shawnee. It's been an interesting little matchup. A very minion heavy deck like face hunter versus a deck that thrives against early game minions to get all their cheap spells off for quests like quest mage. I'm interested to see how some plays out. What Shawnee's tactic is to overcome all that mana reduction, brain freezes, heat waves. See, see what they got. I think this matchup all comes down to who, whoever just puts most damage out of that at first. I feel like the mage might have that though. 
I would tend to say this matchup goes down to how quickly Face Hunter can get the damage on board. Because you know Mage yeah. can deal damage all day long with the Ignite shuffling back into their deck, spell damage plus three. All they have to do is hold off this Face Hunter long enough and they're almost assured of victory. That's true. There's one Ignite coming out already. Yeah. The other one goes back in the deck. That's one of my favorite card designs ever in Hearthstone. I know it's a controversial card, but I just think it's so cool to have that almost inevitable win condition you're racing against. I think it's a very neat design. Mage has always been a very, uh, very cool deck. It's a very, very cool class in general. Looks like Shawnee is edging towards a Wolpertinger Demon Companion combo. Maybe look for a Kolek, a little attack buff. Then probably saving Brawler into Guardian next turn for that three mana combo. Definitely a, a strong start. Maybe looking to go wide here with AI. Okay. okay. Notice how they use the dormant minion to play around a Kona Cold that would otherwise clear their board. That's it's well played. It's the subtleties of Shawnee's play. Like Key Pike just not a one, just doesn't want to take that two damage phase. They're also going to freeze the minion. And that's going to complete the first stage of their quest. On turn three, already through step one. That's a pretty good pace. However, though, board's still empty, so that's a guaranteed five base. Decent board presence. Like, Shawnee will have the aim shot this time around. And there's that three mana combo coming out I was talking about. That is such a, such a strong play. 4-2, Divine Shield, Taunt. That's... Pretty difficult to get rid of for any class. Yeah, but luck luckily, you know, Mage, they can just hear a fire to ping that. Get rid of the Divine Shield. Looks like they're going to ignite it. Choose to ignite it. Stack up that little ex extra damage in their deck. Get a fire spell rocking. I mean, I don't know if I agree with that. I would have I just pinged the. I would have pinged Ben. Oh, actually, no. Oh, Never Hot mind. Streak into Fire Sale. They know what they're doing. And yeah. a flurry. Freeze out them five more damage. They are pretty stranded in hand, though, down to one card. What are they going to do? Another high tempo play from Shawnee. Man crick down, wife in the deck. Free two damage phase. First flame. They're getting rid of it. Unfortunate. And the wand thief here. That's interesting. See what they can find. Made a little bit of board presence off the primordial. Searching for some. What do they have? Now, this is gonna, also going to complete the next step of their quest and give them another discover. Then they've got the second first flame, or the second flame rather, to start on this third step of the quest. Arcanist Dongrass could reasonably be coming down next turn. That is very unfortunate for Shawnee. Yeah, I'm sure they would have liked to see Mancrick dodge all three of those, but it just didn't quite come to fruition. Either Shawnee either plays the rifle here, or they just hear a power go face and just try to draw something next turn. I'll, I'll be intrigued here, because aimed shot hero power fills mana. That's true. Looks like that's what they're leaning towards here. Just send in the damage face. Nothing wrong with that. It's efficient. Well, it's what Hunter loves to do, right? Face, face, face. Yeah. Flurry. And that looks like it's going to allow Dawn Grass to come down. Will they play it this turn? They will. It's not looking good for Shawnee, especially. I, I, I have a feeling that the Knights are going to just start flying. Neophyte here is an interesting draw because it does tech against Quest Mage very well, being a spell heavy deck. But with such a low cost hand, you can't imagine it really doing much in this scenario, right? Yeah. I feel like even if they play the, the Neophyte, like, Rogue, or not Rogue, may, may, may just, they'll just still spend the mana and use it. Committing the Freezing Trap to keep that 7-7 seven, seven off the board. It's well played. Okay. Notice how they hit the 1-2 so they couldn't test for it. That's, that's well played from Shawnee. Again, the subtleties, high level play. 
Oh, the freezing trap. I have proven myself. Looks and like that. you Pike's just gonna recommit it, okay? Yeah. That is probably not the draw Shawnee was looking for. No. But with the freezing Explo trap explosive here, that's two more damage face. That could come in that could matter. You pike down to six here. Terrain technically four, albeit over four turns. Definitely. I do like the freezing trap play from Shawnee though. Like that definitely you pike just pretty much just had to waste their turn to get uh Dawn Grass back on board. Explosive trap, dude. Shawnee will still take seven face though. If any minion sticks here, Shawnee will find an onboard lethal. Eight damage Ooh. off the rune dorb is killer though. Ignite. Fireball. Oh, I just realized Dawngrass triggered twice off the freezing trap and gave them youth pike spell damage six. That that's, that's absurd. I've actually never seen that happen before. That's unfortunate. It does stack like that. I I believe that's the only quest reward that'll that's worded to be able to do that. That's that's an interesting oh. interaction. I've never seen that before. That is very interesting. Well, uh, that's that's pretty powerful. I'm sure. There's probably been some double battle cry decks and wild and such that have abused that and been pretty successful. I'd have to imagine that's a yeah. that's a game ender if you can pull that off. Yep, trying definitely playing well. I feel, I feel like they're just you know they're setting themselves up for the reverse sweep. That's yeah. definitely what's going on here. They're back to the elemental shaman, looking to find their first victory here as Upike brings out Druid. Interestingly enough, though, that is not the aggro druid. Not that bad. is a celestial anaconda type druid. Maybe a more combo heavy deck. This might just fall victim to the aggro of it. And Colt Neophyte's great disruption against it. Definitely. Yeah. If this is their third and final deck, I wonder what Shawnee banned. Uh, it looks like Shawnee has banned their Warlock. The Warlock. I don't know if that was the best play, but... They, they might have felt it was particularly teched against their list in some way that they thought they had a better chance against their three. Warlock's definitely strong, especially with the new meta. It's, it's very strong, so I can see why they banned it. But It's gone kind of under the radar recently after the several nerfs they got for being, albeit too strong, but it's still a very powerful deck, as you said. Arid Stormer on two, though, is going to be a lot of tempo. So this is the thing with this uh with this deck formatting. Like you do have to win with each each deck that you bring. So like this could set Shawnee up for the, the reverse sweep. Yeah, I mean if they're teched against this alignment style druid, this might be the matchup they've been waiting for. Yeah. I mean they have the deck list and they, they know what cards, they know the combos, so you pike losing claw machine off fungal is pretty unfortunate there. That's the main way to tutor Anaconda to your hand, so that's uh that's a pretty significant loss for them. Shawnee with a Wind Fury already on board. Unfortunate that they're uh, sitting so awkward, not quite going to be able to fill their mana this turn. Looks like they're going to be floating one regardless of what their play is. Personally, I would almost lean into saving Boner and Neophyte for next turn so you can double up and really get that battle cry. Really get that teched against the spell heavy deck. It looks like they're going to tempo it out. Okay. Maybe trying to call you Pike out on not having the removal for it. As they've passed on removing their previous two minions. That's that's an interesting play. I don't, I'm not against that. Definitely. I think their goal is just to kill the Druid as soon as possible. Get the other decks. Just reverse sweep. Oh, the Cloak boy already out. Does Shawnee have the clear, though? They do. Oh, uh, down the hole to the right. Looks like that. All the way down there. U Pike's turn was completely left. useless. Shawnee just cleared board, and they're pushing damage to face. But it does look like U Pike will put up the overgrowth. They're 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 digging for something. They're trying to get a card. They're trying to do something just to stop Shawnee. Just to tempo, you know, slow the game down just a little bit here. But Shawnee will have it. It looks like. 
they might have lethal this turn, maybe? Yeah. Or maybe they're one off. No, oh, I miscounted, but definitely. Putting U Pike in an awkward place. I concede. Oh, it looks like U Pike will just just gonna concede there. Yeah, no one to hold him and no one to fold him, I guess. So that's one on board for Shawnee. For Shawnee, was that? Yeah. They pushed damage to face, and U-Pike just couldn't handle it. There was a I, that, that's what that Elemental Shaman deck specializes at, right? Just going fast. Yeah. Sorry to uh, abandon you in the booth there, partner, but I had a emergency popped up. I had to take care of it real quick. That's a problem. No problem. Well, I got to handle I got to handle But the thing is, no. I think Shawnee knows probably, probably best if they're going to win this matchup or not. Because, like I said, with with the, with the deck format, how like the way it is, you probably has to play this deck until they win. So, this will have to face Shawnee's Hunter, and I believe the Rogue. Yeah. Shawnee knows what they're up against. That is for sure. And they picked their two tempo decks to go first. They're pretty confident to get wins with them. Just I try and how pressure this combo heavy deck. I feel like Hunter is favored in this matchup. Definitely the aggro, but. I, it's going to be very interesting, like very interesting to see the the rogue deck. I feel like that might be a coin flip. I feel like it might depend on their mulligan. To be honest with you, it's because they're both very combo heavy decks. Whichever one gets their gets their gas going first might be uh, pretty hard to turn the tables against. Definitely, but I definitely think we're we, we are going to see a game six. I, I, have a, I have a good feeling we're going to see a game six. I hope so. We got some good Hearthstone to watch. It's a uh... It's an intriguing match this far, for sure. I mean, I always watch Hearthstone in my free time. Definitely the viewers are, too. Shawnee already with the 4-2 Divine Shield. They're going very, very quick this game. It's going to be hard to remove. It's going to push a lot of damage face. Definitely. Especially if Shawnee gets, you know, just gets the damage on early. They're going to be putting, you know, U-Pike might be, might be a little sweaty, you know? Start sweating a little bit. Worried to that final game. Looks like Shawnee's going to hedge towards the Neophyte here just to tech away their removal and try to keep that 4 2 on board, push more damage out of it. Definitely. Shawnee's definitely putting the pressure on. Not only on board, but like mentally. I mean, yeah, it's it's got to take a toll on you. You just have to clear board after board after board, 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 and they just constantly have more damage for you. Plus, definitely you takes bike. a toll after a while as a combo, though. Especially since you bike had the you know the two game lead, and especially if they, if they do go into the sixth match. That, you know, they must be thinking, like, they, they, they're going to start worrying a little bit, but yeah, let's go work, work on that mental aspect of the game as well. Barak is just a great draw here. Let's Shawnee tempo out their 2-2s. Two They've got a not only on-curve play for 5, but a hand reload. They are just in a great spot. They're moving so quickly through this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I just blinked, and it's turn 4, and U-Pike only has 12 health. Lunar Eclipse coming down, though. It's efficient removal. We'll see what they've got here. And the glow fly, it's a lot of tempo as well. Yeah, but will Shawnee remove it or just elect to go face? It's an interesting question, right? Because with that being coined, they're not overloaded, and Arbor up next turn could be absolutely ruthless for the U Pike. So it's a question, of Shawnee. How much are they certain that they can get that they can brace the Struid down? I mean, all they need is they're well, they're I believe there's two way two away from lethal, so. And you have to think that Kodo Bane's going to draw that in hand, whether it be an aimed shot or any kind of direct damage in this Hunter deck. That is true. Let alone the 5-4 on board that gets a random attack. Could go face and just end the game. Definitely. I feel like the play for Shawnee here is to go all face and then do play the, the Kodo Bane and just hope that they get, like, just any damage to face, like, like a fierce shot maybe or... Maybe you drop the man crick hero power, go for the wife lethal, just top deck it. They do have a quick shot in the deck. They have two, I believe. Looks like they're gonna opt to hedge against it a little bit and trade in the neophyte. Shawnee does have 
Oh, there's one of the quick shots. And an uh, aimed th shot. That's why aimed shot is going to leave them at exactly seven. So they put them at the seven health breakpoint where aim shot gets it done regardless. They knew Kota Bane to get it for them. Yeah. That's really well done. So I believe as, as long as U Pike does not, you know, armor up here, get, put some armor, they're just, they're dead this turn. Studies, maybe looking for an answer. Arbor up. I mean, yeah, but is that enough? That will let them clear Shawnee's board, but it doesn't give them the armor to survive the quick shot. It looks like that's going to be a victory for Shawnee. GG, looks like it will go into game six. All Shawnee has to do is quick shot, aim shot, and hero power, and the game will be over. Shawnee, yeah, actually even having spare damage off both quick shots. Quick shots. Wow. Even top decked into it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, there's... There you go. All right, we're getting to game six here. It's we'll, all we'll down gonna, to one. We're going to see a Druid, a Druid v. Road match. So, who, who do you tend to favor going into this matchup? It's a it's an interesting one, to say the least. One you might you not know, see as much of. I don't want to be biased, but I'm going to say Rogue. You know? Uh, I, I, yeah, I tend to agree with you. I have played against Groat Rogue, Groat Rogue quite a bit on the ladder, and it is a tough deck to play against once it gets going. Yeah, Rogue's always been like a combo deck. I mean, there have been a few aggro rogues, but like I definitely feel like once the combo starts rolling, Shawnee will just will have it. And you have to think two games reversing, Shawnee's going to have a lot of momentum going into this game. They're going to be feeling themselves. They're going to want this reverse sweep against the Struid. The only problem I see is maybe the Glowfly Swarm, and maybe if they have some clears for that. But as long as Shawnee starts early, like gets the aggro going, I don't think they'll have a problem. This is a deck I haven't done too, too much research on as Grow Rogue. I haven't watched much of it played. I'm not sure what the mulligan keeps are, what the plays are. Do you have any idea about that? The mulligans, I believe. I definitely think, like, Grow and Starting Hand is good. I think the Secret Passages are definitely good, too. But no, I was like, they're mulligan them both away. Interesting. Oh, they got the Grow. They got and both the field, of them. Both field contacts to draw through their deck. It's a, I definitely not a bad mulligan. It's an awkward one, though, seeing as you got two copies of two cards. Not a lot of variety. It's not really usually what you want to see, especially as a rogue. That's but true. Double field contact with a lot of draw power might be able to negate that. I'll be interested to see how this works out. I no, don't... Uh... Sorry, I, was going... I don't believe that, sh that this rogue deck that Shawnee is running has a lot of board clear. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. It may come down to Shawnee drawing the uh, the one four that frenzy reduces cost your hand by one, but efficient octopod. That's such a uh, such an efficient card. That's yeah. kind of what makes this deck thrive, in my opinion. Yeah, but look, at, I didn't look too much at the deck list, but I, like I, I guess I didn't see a board clear, so this might be a bad matchup for Shawnee. They had, like I said, they'll do that combo out pretty early before you know. The Druid can stack their hand and get the glow fly out and just start buffing them. Shawnee opts to not coin the one thief for a draw. They're just going to tempo field contacts. They know they've got the second one. It's a, I like that play. If it sticks, you've got a really powerful turn next turn. If not, you're not really worried about it. Yeah. And as you going to choose the overgrowth, Shawnee's going to get a full turn with this field contact on board. Shadow step, okay. Okay. Looks like they're gonna get some draws moving through here. That they're definitely trying to tempo this. <laughs> in Cantor's is slow. a in interesting option in Rogue. I don't think you want it in this deck, but uh, it's a. There are some decks that'd be a scary discover. Definitely. I don't know, bro. A one mana Garot doesn't sound too bad. Uh, unfortunate that they're both in hand already off the moment. Yeah, that's true, that's <laughs> true. You hate to see it. And Shadow stepping to protect the field contact as well. Now it's one mana, it's a lot easier to combo out, get more draws down. That's that's a solid turn from Johnny. That's true. It would not surprise me to see field contact in the Seeker Passage next turn at all. It leaves you a lot of mana to work with. A great play. Definitely. Johnny does have the coin, though. They, they do want to use that. Next turn, at least. I believe that they're just going to... Oh, gonna maybe something this, this turn? Time's ticking. 
I think they're just gonna hit face and turn. Just opting to hold the weapon swing even, just end. Okay, interesting. Glowfly Swarm comes down. The Cone of Cold is a really good hedge against that, though. It'll be interesting to see exactly how they approach this. Definitely. They could drop the Aug Merchant with it and clear three of them, but that would disrupt their combo a little bit, leaving them short of the spell damage for a full OTK. So I'm not sure if that's worth it or the line they're looking for. That is true. I mean, if Shawnee does elect to leave the Glowflies alone, I assume you, Pike, would buff them next turn. Yeah, I don't think you can afford to leave them alone. Arbor Up is just an incredibly efficient card, especially on a full board. Especially it can push a lot of damage. I believe if they do Arbor Up and all all the Glowflies stay, that is lethal. That is, what, exactly 28? That is exactly 28, you're correct. Aug Merchant coming down? Into Cone of Cold, maybe? Are they going to Shadow the Step the Pin Flinger? I will. Coin. Then Swing Rut. Okay. Yeah, that's a good turn for Chani. Really lightens up the pressure on the board. And may actually force a little bit of pressure if that spell damage minion stays alive. That could be a little bit of a threat. Yeah, definitely. But it makes you, makes you wonder, like, how long is Shani going to, you know? be able to keep this up until they do get their combo. They do still have quite a bit more deck to draw through, and if Yupike keeps pressure on him, that could get difficult. That's true. Yupike already did use one of the Glowfly Swarms, though. They only have one more, I believe. But they do have a whole bunch of Treants. Oh, wow. As well. That is that is heavy tempo from Yupike. And, yeah. Shawnee will have to answer here, or they are dead. Time. They do have the one mana field contact to move through this, so they could find some options, hopefully. I don't know if they have very many options left. Like I said, looking through the deck list, I don't think they have very many board clears. Be interesting to see what they can pull out here. You might, might be able to see a little bit of magic. Never against it. You have the RNG aspect of Hearthstone, so you gotta love it. <laughs> oh, love it or hate it for what it's worth. Passage. Look for look for an answer. Prize plunder is going to be strong here. Prize plunder does deal three. It does answer one of these minions. Could they? Play, would it count? Will the pen flinger count if they played him first? To add another. Yes. That would. Yeah. I won't do them much though. And a weapon swing gets rid of that one as well. A oh, brain freeze. Shawnee found a way through that pretty well. That's still taking some damage here, but that's a good combo to such a strong turn from you, Pike. That's a good I answer. Mean, yeah. I mean, I'd rather you know take twelve than, down, you know, than lethal. But yeah. <laughs> and fortunately, with the full hand, the, both the groats are in it and the field contact, so you can't can't break the combo here. Yeah, but like even with the, even with the, the armoring up right now, yeah, they're, they're just armored up. But like, man, Shawnee's grasping at straws right now. That scenario and, word is going to be tough. That I believe that puts them out of Groat's range, especially with only one spell damage to work through. Shawnee's in a tough spot here. And the burn prep too. Yeah, I'm sure they would have loved to have that prep and get some efficient things done this turn, but uh, alas, it's not going to come through for them. It'll be interesting to see what they do. It's not looking the best. They are not dead on board, though, which is an interesting note. Or Actually, no, they are with Hero Power. But being that 4-1 tree, and I doubt it's really going to live. I think Shawnee might have at least one more turn after this one. Definitely. Uh, not a spot that I would want to be in. I will say that. This is very awkward. Definitely. There's an Octobot. Both of them. Do you reduce the hand this turn and then go? I believe they have to. But it's going to get stealth off the draw, I believe. Yeah. 
Shawnee just ran out of time, it looks like. I, th I think they got what they wanted out of it, though. Yeah, that's true. That's oof, not good. And to glorify that, Shawnee, I think they have to find a way to end it this turn if they want a chance at it. That is a lot of tempo. That's a lot of board. But with double Octobot in hand, a lot of things are possible. That's true. Eight mana in a dream. The spell damage is going to come down. Looks like they're going to do their best to see how much damage they can push. Both those growth, the growths are doing 24 right now, I believe, if you get all the draws off. Not yeah. sure where Shawnee's looking to find that extra 12 from. Maybe they've got something I don't know about. You never know. Like I said, national champs, they always have something up their sleeve. They always have something. You're right. I, I would like to see a miracle here, but I just, I don't see how it can be done. Speaking of miracles, there is, there used to be that called Miracle Road. So you know and what? It, it, it did used to be called Miracle Road. You're right. There's a will, there's a way. They're they are roping though. They've got to start going. Yeah, that's why I said they're, they're running. Trading the in the spell damage, unfortunately, too. I. This is rough. Still do have both corrodes, though. That's unfortunate. I think that's going to be the game for you, Pike. I don't think Shawnee got anything off that we're not seeing. <laughs> Still watching. I I don't think they had enough damage to push it face and get the lethal, but I am interested to see how much they did manage to push out of that turn. Yeah. Managed to draw all the growths. No spell damage, though, and the Cenarian just putting them out of range anyway. It was, it's a tough break for Shawnee, but... Well played from them, regardless. I think that is a that was a really tough matchup for them with the early arb for the early glowfly swarms coming down. That was a uh, tough game for them to find a win in. Definitely, especially when you have like a more of the combo deck versus a somewhat aggro deck. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny how a deck like that can really shift its roles that that druid can about how it can play for that board early with glowfly. It can play the combo heavy game. It's a very versatile deck. It's pretty underrated. Yeah. Definitely. Shawnee definitely playing their best, though. Like, that was, that was a very hard matchup. It like, was a very, very close match, especially coming back from the 0-2 deficit, the middle fortitude to do that. It was it was well played from Shawnee. Yep. I did take him to game six. So. All right. Thank you all for watching. See you guys next time.